Like what's behind me? Uh, my calendar pictures. Yeah, Walter that's Burke. the celebrity wall. That's the celebrity wall. You know who that is? Not even close. You're not even gonna take a guess. Um, that was one of my biggest well. one of my biggest guests. That's Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, yeah, I remember yeah, that. Bo Jackson, yeah, Bo Jackson, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too serious anyways we, we, we yeah, i'm not gonna do you know, i was thinking the other day i said you know what should we start shows with saying well guys welcome to the late night restaurant show or should we just you're you're you got the app open anyways you're listening to our stuff you're probably guessing it's a show i didn't say podcast no because it's not a podcast but yeah pe- i think so. um if people land here they know what they're in for and where they're going so um, the logo's on here. Mind you, you can't hear a logo, so that's... Hmm. A logo? What do you mean? Well, the logo's up in the top right corner of the screen, right? The late night I got that. I got that right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I don't know. You know, it's... I So So. anyways, I was saying earlier, I was uh, chatting with our guest that's on tonight a little bit before we started tonight. I get excited, and a lot of people ask me after doing all the shows that we've done, we're almost coming up to our one year, just so you know, planning that out. And we do have some pretty big announcements coming up. Anyways, I was saying my favorite is talking to people that are actually own, run restaurants, out in the field working. Mm-hmm. They're my favorite guests. Not dissing all the tech companies. You're all great. Don't get me wrong. But I absolutely love listening to people that are out there, the hardworking people of our industry. And uh, those are the best. They're the best shows. I almost said podcasts. They're best shows. And yeah. uh, I love hearing the stories. What'd you say? Yeah, I agree. I, you had frozen yeah. up there for a second. Um, I think it's yeah, I, now. I, I agree. It's um, it, it's always fun to learn and hear, and it's it's always fun that um, we there's a lot of common threads we hear in 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 the stories of these restaurants and the operations that they're they're running. The the common things are. Or it's it's cool that a lot of people have have the same sort of path, and they end up, you know, where where they are. So um, I'm interested to hear tonight's uh, tonight's guests and how they got here because I, I don't know that. Sorry. You know, it's interesting. Is there's never a, they're, they're all they're 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 heart they they they, they I don't know what I'm trying to say here way too much coffee again, but it, they they grab me because it's they're always such an incredible story of how they get to this moment in their careers mm-hmm. and what they've been doing. And I don't think we've ever met a restaurateur or chef or person in the industry that's been, Hey, it's so easy. And it's, I mean, it's been so easy. I don't think we've ever had that. So, no, right. So it's no. going to be a great show. Anyways, enjoy everyone. Sit back. It's not a podcast. Dominic has been warming up his, his question strategy. <laughs> You're warming it up, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. You all warm? I'm warm. You're warm? I'm sorry. And so our poor guests are like, so these guys just talk about how warm they are. How warm? <laughs> well, we haven't said fuzzy yet, so it's good. It's going to be okay. Fuzzy. Okay. We so have we have a rule, stuff. everyone. We better tell everyone our guests. No, we're not doing it tonight. Well, maybe the next one. But Dominic sometimes texts me things to say on the show. Why would you tell? Why would you tell? Why would you well, say Well, it's that? because, it, well, I know, but it's funny because they might say, well, I, I don't look at it because I don't do that, but he'll say, <laughs> hey, like, say fuzzy pe- peaches or whatever. So, no, Jay, that's, that's supposed to be a secret, man. <laughs> a secret? I just blew it? Yeah. All right. There you go. Well, that's why we're not a podcast. That's why we're not a podcast. <laughs> there we go. I blew it. Well, enjoy. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to get a text, though. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Anyways, here we go.
<laughs> hey, Siler, there you is, go. How do Hello. we say it? Is it? I know Amber. I can say that name, but is it Siler? It is. Yeah. Yes. Oh. But in Italy, they say Silar. 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 But yes, it's Siler. Okay. And Dominique, it's an honor to meet you. You are so warm and fuzzy and <laughs> world famous at that. So it's very well, nice. The honor is all mine, Siler. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Where, where are you guys located? Um, we're in a, well, not really small. I was going to say we're in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Which is so, south of Charlotte. Yeah. South kind of right at the border of Charlotte. And Dominic, his favorite town of the whole U.S. is Raleigh, North Carolina. How cool is that? I've been doing my research on Dominic. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a wiki. But it, <laughs> you know what? My, my, the favorite part of my trip there was going to see the the USS North Carolina, actually. I oh, went, yeah. I went and seen that. That was very cool. That's awesome. So <laughs> I was telling him how you're from Durham. So Yeah. That's not, not as great as Raleigh, but. That's yeah. great. <laughs> You got the Durham Bulls. So wow. you know, where, where do the where do the the North Car where do the um what are they called Ovechkin? Where does he play? North Carolina, the the hockey team. The, are they in Durham or Raleigh? Raleigh. Yeah. They're in Raleigh. The Hurricanes. The yeah. Hurricanes. Yeah. 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 That's that's okay. that neck of the woods. Are Jay they from Blue. Canada? Were they no. bought? No, no. No, well, we need to hire everybody from Canada no. because we don't have <laughs> snow down here. So. <laughs> the the our, the labor's cheaper for Canadian. We get a, That's right. <laughs> yeah, we can pay a little more, and y'all get like a lot of money. Right, you, know? you get a like a thirty percent discount because of the dollar, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's awesome. a deal. It's definitely a deal. Um, t tell us, tell us a little bit about what you do, and and thanks for joining us. I guess that's the first thing. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks and, for having us. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us about you. So well, I, Siler, then Amber, then Amber again, then Siler, and then yeah, probably, I got it. I got it. So it'll probably be more Amber. So Siler Chapman, yeah, she's way better to look at. So for everybody that's listening on uh, voice here, we got to get right over to the video side of things. Um, but but Siler Chapman here, I am a four-time World Pizza Champion. Um, a founding member of the World Pizza Champions, and um, cool. so yeah, so that's um, you know I started my my very first pizzeria at 18 years old. So I can't wait to tell that story. And then I met this beautiful lady beside me. Um, I told her I was a delivery driver because I showed up in this little fancy delivery car. And, um, and I, I went, said, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> and so I played that card for about, you know, good six weeks to a couple months. And she never thought that I was actually the owner of the restaurant. And, um, and now I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, um, but that's me. And then, um, so go ahead and tell them a little bit about you. So I am a mixture of roles. We have, you know, we, we met when I was in college. Um, we started King of Fire Pizza. I had nothing to do with pizza. I have a bachelor's in dance. I worked at the hospital with oncology kids not even close to pizza. Um, and somehow came into this full time on top of four kids and their full time schedule. Yep. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. It's, oh, wow. So there's, you, there's days that I joke with him that I would rather say tag you're it and go work in the office just to be able to not deal with the craziness <laughs> every day. <laughs> pizza is magic though, right? It is. it is. Wait a sec. The pizza that he delivered the first time, the was it good? I don't remember it. <laughs> you don't remember? I was going to say, what was it? Yeah, what was it? It wasn't very memorable, obviously. Yeah. But the one she makes today is very memorable. So. You've, you've, upped, you've upped your game, Siler. Yeah. I did. I had to. I had to go out and learn how to make the best pizza ever to keep her around. He's practiced you know? enough that's, now. That's right. And when, when did, your four time world champion. Yep. For, well, I guess my first question is, what pizza won the first time? So, so let's go. There's there's <laughs> multiple world titles you can win, right? Um, you can win from making the largest pizza all the way down to doing acrobatics. 
I was always known as as the young kid that did acrobatic he was pizza tossing. Silly Siler. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> silly Siler. We have a kid's Siler. book out called uh, Tony and the World Pizza <laughs> Champions as a kid's book. And I'm a cartoon character called Silly Siler. Cool. And so I've always rode a unicycle tossing pizza dough. And um, so we won in 2006, seven and eight. Uh, for uh, acrobatics, and that's where I got my first three world titles. And this past July, I was in Naples, Italy, and I won the American uh, division of the Caputo Cup in Naples. So I, I took cool. first place there. So that was my very first um, cooking competition that I got to win. Now, back up 18 years in 2000, oh, a little, yeah, 19 years. 2005, we brought the World Pizza Games back. And, and I say that as we, uh, me, Tony Gimiani, uh, Joe Bryant. Carlucci, Ken Bryant, and Michael Shepard, we brought, we were the founders of the World Pizza Champions team, and we brought the games back to Las Vegas. We yeah. got a distinction that if you win at this competition, you're, you're, able to say you won a world title nice. and how do you get that sanction sanction is you have to go to italy and work through the the pizza gods over there and and i call it the pizza mafia uh you have to work <laughs> through them to be able to have this as a sanction and, and we did and um and there's three places in america or in the world that you can get a world title here in vegas uh parma italy and naples those are the only three sanctions that allows you to call it a world title Wow. And, um, but he so, can't compete in Vegas. So Vegas is already off limits, off limits for him. So to go to well, Italy, in the world. is there a mafia thing for that? Why can't you compete in Vegas? Oh, so <laughs> we run the competition. Because they run the competition. Oh, okay. so wow. It wouldn't be fair, yeah. wouldn't be fair right? <laughs> what did you do in Vegas? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so, so long story short, um, we've always run the competition, but to go to Italy and compete at their game, you know, I remember a buddy of ours named Sean Browser. He took a, a beautiful pie that he won here in America uh, that had all meats on it to Parma. Or it was actually in South Majoria, Italy at yeah. the time before they moved it to Parma. And the judges wouldn't even judge his pizza. It's it's not easy to win in Italy. No, they would not judge well, it because they didn't understand. They didn't understand American have you, pizza. Have you ever had pizza in Italy? I have not. So it's very, totally I mean, different. completely different yeah. from, you know, the way that they do their sauce. It's like basic tomatoes, very little cheese. You know, they have specific mm -hmm. meats that you put on the pizza, which is nothing like what we do here. Right. And so again, so if you it, don't use their toppings, you've already, yeah. and then right. you're not Italian. So Double when they strike. see me, they, they go minus a hundred <laughs> points right off the rip. You know, I think all you got to do, Siler, is put an O on the end of your name. Well, that's why I go by <laughs> Cilar and I go by Chapman. <laughs> yeah, you know, so <laughs> instead of I Chapman, it's Chapmiani. You know, um, but and yeah, Amber, so, it'd be Embriona. So oh yeah, well no, yeah. they love her. They think she's Sicilian. <laughs> she's got blonde hair. She's got a good tan. You know, they think she's Sicilian. It's great. So. Hey, um, so the Caputo Cup, uh, do, have you worked with that flower before in the States when you went there and worked with theirs? No, not at all. Um, that's Because that's impressive, I think. Like for me, that would be, I'm a baker, but you're using, I'm assuming you're using their product. Correct. The yeah. Cup. yeah. And so that, you and have to go there and make, make a pizza from scratch with their ingredients mm -hmm. and right. you had not competed there. Correct. Right. Correct. And I competed wow. there last year and I learned a lot. I got fifth place last year, but I was so upset about it because I was like, you know, I put my heart and soul in last year. Really, you know, you spend a lot of time on the road. You're you're missing your family. So everything we do, we're going out to win. Right. And I got fifth place. And I think the judges said that I was like in the first place all the way through almost to the end. And then these guys came in and just blew me out of the water. And I'm like, OK, cool. Well, now I'm going to go come back home and really study, learn. And and Tony laughed at me. He was like, you, you got this look on your face. You're going to really, you really are determined on you. And I'm like, yes. So yeah. I came back. I studied that flower. I, I worked with it. And even today, we don't use their flower on our day-to-day -day operation. But guess what? We're actually working through that process of switching over. 
because we, as we're learning about the flower in American flower, there's 13 added ingredients in American flour that Italian flour doesn't have. So what is that? 13. Chemical, chemicals and more chemicals. Well, there's, yeah. And then the enrichment too. I don't think they That's do right. that there, right? right? Like I was, you know, I, I was on this sort of quest this past weekend looking for unenriched flour. Yep. You were on a quest a for quest. flour. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> and it was it wasn't and you wonder why he's the celebrity. Well, it's kind of warm and fuzzy feeling when he says quest like that. Exactly. I went on a quest. Did you have a donkey with you or what? Well, I saw I saw Caputo flour in a store here. And I think one kilo, no, uh, two, sorry, two kilos was like $26. It yes, was very sir. expensive. But very. You, you know, I understand why, right? And it, right. it was in a specialty store, all that stuff. But Jay, um, there is a there is sort of un I think it's becoming documented now that the um, celiacs in Europe have mm -hmm. way less reaction to, to their wheat products. And it's, you know, there's something around it's, it's, the grain, the additives, grain wheat and soft, you know, the, all that kind of stuff, the amount of gluten that's naturally in the flour and yeah, the additives and the bleaching. Right. And, and what is that doing to our bodies? Right. So, and now everybody we'll found out in about 50 years, well, no, it's 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 happening to kids now, right? Like they're all of a sudden coming out yeah. of the wounds with, oh my gosh, they got all these allergies. Fifteen yeah. years ago, we didn't hear about it, right? No, but here, it's, yeah. this little thing called a smartphone. We can Google things, and you can see what the ingredients are very quickly. Well, now, and you know, in America, we use all these fancy monster words. Nobody's going to take the time to look them up. Well, guess what? We're getting educated now. We are looking these up, and now we're seeing what's how bad it really well, is. Look, look at the look at the the growth of Whole Foods and right. and um, Sprouts Markets and those guys. Like there, there's that's definitely on the incline, right? There, there people right. are getting way more aware everywhere, you, right? In you restaurants, you need know, to spend if, two bucks more to, to get know that it's clean to know it's clean, right? And they're okay sure. to spend that. Because we're getting healthier and we want to live longer, but well, for sure, and that, you know what? There's there's some there's some credibility to what they do in Europe and in, in not allowing these things. Um, they've got history, correct? Mm -hmm. Our 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 North American history, well, Canada and the states anyway, um, is you know modifying things for for mass production. That's our that's yeah. always our goal, right? How do we make it bigger, faster, stronger? Like get more yield and they're, you know, they've got strict rules around crop rotation in most of Europe and they're, they're so that the soil doesn't get depleted. And here we got to um, we got to fertilize the shit out of it, literally, to to get it to yield anything because we 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 abuse we abuse the land. Right. So right. There, that's yeah, a, I think that's a whole nother show. <laughs> no, Dominic, listen, I got a neighbor next door. He is into um, he's in construction. But they do the big warehouse and manufacturing, and he's into um, the robotic side of things. Cool. And his company, mm -hmm. it's one of the largest on the East Coast right now, okay? He's building a chicken warehouse. Listen to what I'm telling you. They are doing 100% fake chickens on the line to keep up for Tyson. Listen to what I just said. What kind they of chicken? Fake so you, chickens. You don't know what you're eating. On a line to add as an additive to the fake or the chicken that you're supposedly buying from certain big brands, I should say, out of respect. Wow. That's what they're doing. And he showed this to me and it's the most sick, sickening thing I've ever it's, seen. Yeah. It's, I call it plant-based, but it's not plant-based. It's literally they're, they're uh, making this fake chicken and they're making assembly lines out of it. And just to keep it. up with the demand. Yeah. They're keeping up so they can keep up with the demand of Americans buying chicken. But you, as and as a consumer, you don't know that that's what you're buying because they put the big fancy words in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, there's, there, the, the, the concern is growing. I think that's a big thing. People are, to, to your point, I think people are getting more aware. We're, we're seeing it in restaurants. They're starting to ask, hey, where's this from? People want to know they and yeah. Jay, we've talked about this in the past as well. They want to know, and we, we tell restaurateurs you should tell them, or you should at least have the information because 
when somebody does ask, you want to know. That's and right. if you don't know, you're, you're possibly getting, you know, hey, the the modified. That's right. Robo chicken. But again, we call it the USP, unique selling point, right? Everybody's yeah. got to find their little niche. And how do you compete against the big guy, essentially, right? The so who, but here's the, like, like, um, what the hell is it called? Pizza Hut is not your competition, though. No, 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 no. So, no, no, 100% not. But here's where I'm going with this, okay? You know, their whole, let, let's let's call it Domino's. Their unique selling point is they can get it to your house in a timely manner. It, if you're, you and your wife are going on a date night, okay, you're going to order Domino's because it's cheaper. And it's, easy and it's easier for the kids and, and the babysitter. And kids don't care. And they don't care because it's cheese pizza, right? Yeah. Now, what we're doing is educating our consumer. It does matter. Spend right. a buck more to get our pie because it's healthier for your kid. Yeah. Right. And then we're telling mm -hmm. the story of our flour. Like we're switching all our flour. Now watch this. Dominic, you're going to love this. $21 is what I'm getting a bag of flour for today. And I'm going to go up to 52 bucks a bag. Okay. But here's the but. I can add more water because it as it absorbs the water yeah. better okay so i can go with a higher hydration and and it's a five pound more in a bag so instead of a 50 pound bag it's a 55 with caputo you're you're using 55 pounds and and at the end of the day to the operator you're like oh my gosh you're going double it's only three cents an ounce more serious by the yeah. time you do the math yeah. it's three yeah. cents yeah. An ounce more. Tyler, we've talked about this on our show as well many times in that the difference between mediocre and great is not often a lot of money. That's right. No, it's not. Never. No, 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 no. I, right? it, it's sometimes so getting better ingredients and offering better value, because that's what you're talking about, to your customers is something that everybody should consider. It's like, right. how do I... How do I increase the value? I don't necessarily, and not even necessarily even increase the price. I might be willing to lose three cents Correct. or 18 cents, but give better value, better taste, right. better quality, better, better, a better claim. Well, that's right. But we, I mean, we do that even like with our tomatoes that we use. I mean, he just went and watched the way that they were picked and canned and they're so particular. I mean, they dump. <laughs> Can but, after can because of a dent or and this dent can any, be this I mean, big, but, anything. And you're like, man, you're throwing all this money yeah. away. But that's our goal also is to use the best products. We use some of the most expensive pepperoni. Our cheese is not cheap, but we our our customers know if we try to cheat the system. Yeah. Oh yeah, they'll call oh, you. Yeah. And the way that, you know, a pizza guy like that, that too that uses full fat mozzarella. Right. right, right. You can eat a whole pizza of ours. And you have you don't feel bloated. You don't feel bloated. We use a Polish starter in our in our dough, and we coach and educate our customers that mm -hmm. for even for our celiac um, customers, they can actually have a slice of our pizza and they have zero reaction because really, really? yeah, because of the Polish, it, it breaks. What is that? Tell us, tell us more about that. What is that? Uh, yeah, so a Polish <laughs> starter is like an additive. It's it's a pre ferment that you're adding into the to the dough. Right. And okay. what this is allowing to do. They're is, making it, Jay. It's not a, It's not something they buy. They would make that Polish. Yeah. That's right. We're yeah. making like it we a day before. Yeah. It's a living organism that we add to. So it's a, it's a Polish is one to one. So I take one pound of our flour, one pound of water. Mm -hmm. You add it in and then you let it do its natural thing yeah. in, in a, um, a cool room. You do not refrigerate it and let it just talk to you is what I like <laughs> to call it because when you open it up the next day cool. it's bubbling it's talking to you and the aroma <laughs> is just it smells like just great beer you know it just it, yeah. it's got this acid acidic -y, like just aroma and you add that to your dough but, but what you is, have to keep that alive, alive each day you have to feed it we call it feeding right. the, the the starter every day right? yeah and they have so they have ones that are out there that are over two hundred years old. No way. Yes, they yeah. have a whole this factory in Belgium in, uh, in San that Francisco that has a two hundred year old uh, yep. sour a sour that they've been feeding for right over. So and over. how do, when you say feeding it, I don't like tell me more about that. Well, like what is that? 
<laughs> so like you're you're those, like, adding water. Oh, they're the spoon or what? You're not. You're not adding like. Uh, you're not adding anything but but flour and water. You're just feeding right. it and just allowing feeding it. it. You're keeping feeding. Right, giving it more and letting it grow, so you can take a portion of that for your dough. How much do you take it for the dough? Like how much do you take? So we, so it's funny. We, everybody does 20%, 30%. Right. There's all yep. these formulas. We stick to 10% and people are like, Oh, sometimes it's not worth the while. Uh, trust me. It's, I just won. It's worth the while. Yeah. 10% yeah. is the magic number. I'm gi- I'm giving <laughs> secrets out there. I love that. I love that. Yeah. There's a title. I just won. Um, so, but every, yeah. everybody does it differently depending yeah. on how you do your and, and what are you looking for like what kind of bite what kind of chew you know and, right and that's all the love of of and and Dominic said he's a baker you understand this like it's it's the love of that part of the dough that's that's what makes that's our base that's our infrastructure right, right. and if we can take that and keep building on and being better and better every day yeah. We're going to make one, some of the best pizza around. And that's, but it's funny because I tell my operators that I try to coach and develop that are coming in new guys, ladies down the road is someone trying to learn how to be the best at the same pace you are. So you better come out of the gate, opening up a new restaurant or a new, um, even a new pop-up, you know, COVID changed this whole world of pop-ups. I can take four unis put them on a table and make some pizza and everybody's in love. Yeah. Right. So again, you have to be the best and you got to get a pizza education to be able to do that. And there's so many great schools that we have all over the world now that can help you with that. Right. And so really? got to get educated because the person you, is trying you to folks offer a school as well. You Shit. offer, you offer training. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not there yet. We've got so much going on, <laughs> no, but no time. absolutely no time, <laughs> but we're, we're going to, um, he would totally do it if he had I a free moment. But. And I just, and I just did the Mara Forney, uh, Mara Forney has a separate company called the pizza university. I just talked, uh, uh, I had a three day training class at the right. pizza university last week in Maryland. Oh, wow. Um, he I does did, a few of those a year. I do a few of those a year. I like that part. But I don't, I don't, unfortunately, we're so crazy right now. Um, I can't have you come down and learn. And I'm still learning. Like, I I know certain parts. Of well, that's why we like you. You're a lifelong learner. That's that. that yeah. I think that I, I think understanding that and, and admitting that knowing, hey, I, there's still lots to learn. Oh, yeah. That's important. Oh, yeah. It's funny. I call him, I have a pizza coach. His name's Tony Gemiani. He's a 14 time world pizza champion. I'm only four, you know. There's and 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 we talked I'm about this earlier, was, un, I don't care how small or how big you are, I can learn something from everybody, right. right? How little you might be, you might know something that I don't know, and it's okay to understand that. And that's right. where I'm at on my quest of pizza right now is learning every little ounce that I might not know, but in ten years I might be able to come back to you and say. Now I can teach, coach, develop in a cool. big scale. Does that make sense? Um, do you think, back to the ingredient side, one of the things I was hoping for, and I think it's slowly starting to happen, it's happening on a small scale. Do you think we'll start growing that wheat in the U.S. and Canada using those grains, the original grains that they're using? In, no. in a, so here's happen. what's happened. Here's what happened. Let's, talk, let's talk in the early 1900s when we came over right? The Italians came over, they picked Mm -hmm. that crop up and they brought it over here to our soil that we live on today. Over those, um, and this is what I've been educated on, is over the time, the soil in that grain that we brought over, the DNA strand has had to change through the years to live in our soil. Right. Not the same. The and our, our soil our, isn't balanced right. the same. In every and everything that we're learning or, or in the States what as farming, we're mm-hmm. so regulated and they have to do all these pesticides and this and that in, in Germany, Italy, you don't have to do that. Right. Well, they ban really? it. They ban a lot of it. A lot of it's not allowed. That's right. my point. Like you cannot do that. Yeah. And so again, and, and when I went to the Caputo in uh, last year, we were blessed to be able to go to the Caputo 
the original mill and they bring the trucks in. So they have a ship. They only bring, they, they take seven different grains and they mix them up to make their flour. Okay. When that truck comes, they haven't even bought it yet. They dump the truck at the mill. They test it. Then they look at the farmer and say, we're going to buy it or not buy it because you didn't build it to our spec. Now that is something in America, we grow it. We already bought it. We already gave that farmer his money and here we go to work we because we are going to take the chemicals and mix it all up and make it what it is. Yeah. And that is the difference that I'm seeing. I'm touching, yeah. I'm feeling, I'm seeing it. And I'm like, holy smokes. And when I get done eating a pizza, I even feel different. I'm 41 now. I'm starting to feel everything. You that only I look 40. What the hell? Thanks. Thanks. I'm looking <laughs> cute. Um, she keeps me Don't in his mid thirties. Don't worry. So again, how do you know, you, how does your body react to it? Yeah. I feel like I could eat a whole mm. nother pie now. And it's like, I feel good. Right. I don't feel we like. We might be going to Raleigh to have some, some pizza, Jay. No, you we have a road. I think we can go. Well, well, pizza. Uh, my favorite food <laughs> by 50,000 miles is pizza. I love it. What's the, uh, yeah. what's the name of the restaurant again? It's King of Fire. In Are Raleigh. You ready? you ready for this? What's I, I, in I Raleigh, have, correct? No, no, no. Charlotte, North Carolina. No, sorry. Um, no, no, we're down south. No, you're good. Your favorite <laughs> town is Raleigh. So we're going to find my Raleigh. favorite town. Like no, you we'll said, be, the we'll be in Raleigh before you know it. With our franchise, and we're coming to Raleigh. So okay. But my favorite town's going to be Charlotte after I have your pizza. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so the good thing is, um, it's called King of Fire, but I, I have four kids, three girls, and a little man. So the three girls outweigh it. So when they get old enough, we've already got the new logo. It's going to be called Queen of Fire. And no uh, there will be little pink trailers and, you know, little pink <laughs> restaurants called Queen of Fire. But nice. Our little inside joke. But um, I love it. But yes. Yeah, so, I want to I want to ask you a couple of questions here because I noticed yeah. on your site here. Okay. Ellen, Today Show, Food Network, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell us more. How did you guys get on all those shows? Less than highly favored, right? Uh, no, so here's how it all worked. Um, so it's funny. I went to New York to do a pizza competition. And this guy, Tony, that we keep talking about, uh, he he was the U.S. pizza team's coach at the time. And um, I completely sucked. I got booed off the stage doing acrobatics. Wow. I it, was it, was it, was it was bad. It was bad. It was really bad. And uh, we, we joke about it today. And he hands me this rubber dough at the time. And I'm like, a rubber dough? Cool. And this was the year DVDs came out. Like VHS was a thing. And then DVD. And this Holy was cow, yeah. I think we're talking like 2002, three. He hands me a DVD and it's a how-to video on how to throw pizza dough. And he goes, don't ever come back. <laughs> and I'm like, these New Yorkers are assholes. You know, <laughs> like they're really mean. Okay. <laughs> So my, my guy, uh, he's the late uh, Dave Ostrander, was a phenomenal um, guy in the pizza industry, and, and he always helped me. He was, he was just a good old man, and he knew the restaurant industry very well. And he taught me about food costs. He taught me all these great things. And Dave goes, don't worry, Siler. There's a competition in L.A. in six months. Go out there. You'll do great. He was always, like, in my corner. He was, like, my biggest cheerleader. So I was like, well, guess what? If I go to L.A. and I do good, Tony from New York will actually invite me back. And this was the deal. <laughs> so I go out to L.A. behind the desk for the restoration. Guess who was sitting there? Damn Tony. And I'm like, <laughs> he looks at me he's like, bro, I'm not letting you compete. Like, and I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, I thought you lived in New York. And he's like, dude, I'm from California. I'm from San Francisco. And I'm like, oh, man. So he, I was like, look, tell the TV stations I suck. Don't videotape me. Just let me compete. And if I don't win, you'll never see me ever again. Well, I, I tied for first place with a guy by the name of Joe Carlucci. And no way. so he did tell the TV people I sucked. I had, we had to go back up there, do the routine again. It was great. It was phenomenal. And um, so at this point, you went a free trip to Italy. Well, that day in the audience was the manager of the Ellen Show. I was on Ellen. No way. 
fourth episode ever. Like this was before YouTube or anything. Like I was literally yeah, on her. Have I, like, I have no footage of the damn show. <laughs> Other than like, a picture that she signed. Yeah. And she signed and said, <laughs> we love you. You know, I hope to be on your show one day. And so long story short, um, that's what kicked off the Food Network. And I think that was a big movement in our industry with Tony. Uh, Tony was, you know, winning all these world titles in Italy and he was our coach. And so we started two shows on the Food Network called the Pizza Battle and the Pizza Challenge. And I came in second on those. So I was on Ellen. We did the two back to back Food Network shows. And then um, I was um, working with a gentleman out of New York and he got us on the Today Show with uh, Beyonce. It was the year that she came out with Single Ladies and it was the day before the Macy parade. And so she was promoting the Macy parade and we came out doing pizza toss and it was the best thing ever. And she was like in nine inch heels, not six inch, but nine inch heels walking by us. And I'm like looking up to her, it was like, oh, you know, it's Beyonce, but great time. And then, uh, then Steve Harvey came on mm -hmm. and that was probably the coolest show. Now, let me tell you, I know Ellen got a couple black eyes. Ellen was amazing to me. She took me in the green room. Like she knew I was a nervous wreck. I, I wasn't even 21 yet. Okay. I was 20 at the time. And she looked at me and was like, you're going to do great. Like, this is going to be so much fun. I came out riding on a unicycle, throwing pizza dough. And, <laughs> um, but Steve, what a hoot. This was the year that he rebranded from the Steve Harvey show to Steve. So he okay. moved Chicago to the LA show. He was wanting yeah. to do more upscale, like, kind of interviews and, and the yeah. celebrities. And um, when I went out there and we did our rehearsal run, he goes, Siler, what's your favorite style of pizza? <laughs> and I was like, Steve, you just moved back from Chicago. I love Chicago Cracker Thin. He drops the mic and he go, looks at the audience and goes, oh, it's going to be a cracker thing now. You know, talking, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Like the cracker joke. So I was like, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. You know, <laughs> so we go at the green room and his producer comes in and he goes, Steve, love that. We got to run with that. And I was like, no, I'm from South Carolina. I will be hung. Like, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not even bringing that up, you know. And so that was probably my funnest TV show. I came in second. I didn't know it was supposed to be a competition. They made it a competition. My buddy, buddy Justin Weinstein, he ended up winning. He came out throwing it with uh, the pizza dough on fire. So he made oh, wow. it go nuts. Yeah. Go so. But um, you, you can't eat that if it's on fire, can you? No, no, no. no not well, even and you, you're not going to even eat the dough that they throw away. Yeah, either. so we make it, it – it's a specialized <laughs> dough that we it's do with acrobatics. It's everyday dough. Yeah, we triple the salt. We take out the yeast. We take out the sugar. Well, don't give away your secrets because that's going to be part of the school. No, but I learned, I had to learn this the hard way. Like, that's why I suck so bad. I, I was like, how are these guys spinning this dough? And I'm like, you know, when you get a nice fluffy dough and you're trying to toss it, it just – it's one big toss and it's done. Yeah. How are they spinning it for, you know, 20 minutes? You know, that yeah. doesn't work. Small. You put two together when you do it. Yeah. Oh, that's a secret for the class. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. so are you, uh, are you planning to open another restaurant? Is this what I heard? No. So, so let's, let's back up. So, so we have the food trucks. Yeah. yeah. We have seven food he trucks. He swore he would never seven. open it. He had a restaurant seven. when we first met. And then we swore we were done with pizza. And then we opened up the food trucks and he swore he would never have a restaurant. And here we are. And here we're we are. We're opening two right now. We and I'm actually the idiot that decided to go bigger on the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> here he is. Yeah, we were going to do like wow. a 2,000 square foot restaurant, you know, maybe sit like 30 We were going to keep it small, but then where it's going, there's not a lot of restaurants around and places to eat. So he was like... Let's make well, it a destination. Well, I want to be able to, yeah, he wanted to be a destination spot. I'm like, well, you got to have more than five tables in here. So we need to double the size. And that's what we're doing. So, so wow. we're, we're, we're looking at November. We're going to open our first brick and mortar together. Oh, wow. And um, we're super so pumped awesome. up. We actually, our franchise, well, cool. we a franchise brick and mortar, yep. and he'll open up before even us. So it's, that's even better. So, yeah. Where's um, he opening? He's actually opening in downtown Charlotte, like yeah. right in the heart, in a Wells Fargo building. Like it's going to be huge. Um, but it's, nice. it's lunch. It's lunch only. Oh, so it's going to yeah. be very different from what we have because his will be basically what we offer on the food trucks plus 
salads and a few other oh. extra toppings. But at the restaurant that we're opening, we'll have several different styles of pizza with two different ovens. On your um, <clears throat> on your site, it says weddings. What do you do with weddings? We, we, we cater we own the wedding segment. <laughs> we cater a lot of weddings with the food trucks. Yeah, this. Really? It, what are we at yeah. this year? 152 or 132? 132. 132 we're at 130 <laughs> weddings this year mm -hmm. alone. Yeah, I mean, we travel. Who does insane. that in pizza? Pizza. Right. P pizza at a wedding. Who would have ever dreamed that? The food, the food truck industry for weddings kind of became a thing with COVID. Yep. Yeah. It really took off because of you COVID. could, yeah. You I can mean, go in a field, they can do buffet style. Um, you can have someone behind it and, and passing out each yeah. slice. Yeah, but can you can you do the volume for a wedding? I mean, yeah. ooh, yes, sir. We've done I can feed a hundred two hundred and fifty. Yeah, so we're gonna one trailer can feed up to 250 people in 30 minutes. Whoa. Because we're doing buffet style. That's yeah, okay. We do, and we do ten inch. Not, your, your oven's only so big. How, how can you cook that's that many pizzas? But what? that's why we do 10 inch. So our oven mm -hmm. can fit seven to 10 pizzas, depending on the cook, right? Or the chef behind the oven. Um, and we can cook every three minutes. So we can turn eight. That's three, slices, three minutes. Three, three minutes. We can turn 80 right. slices of pizza. If it's heated correctly and ready to go. That's right. But it's a wood fired oven. 100% mm -hmm. wood fired oven. And we do it a little different. So you, everybody hears wood fired oven, they think auto automatically Neapolitan, neo Neapolitan, right? No, we slow the oven down to about six fifty, and we do American wood fired. So we're nice. using a higher protein, um, yeah. now a higher protein flour, and we're using American toppings versus like doing a San Marzano tomato or yeah, yeah. fresh mozzarella. But we're even actually, but for our weddings though, we do offer additional toppings that we don't have on our like day to day menu. Gotcha. Yeah, we, cool. we go really good. Cool yeah. yeah. I've not seen it. I've seen lots of other stuff at weddings, like at like at midnight or something or eleven o'clock, but yeah. No, a lot of people well, and some people are doing the late night like after party with the food truck thing, but no, we do I mean we and we do some fancy weddings. Yeah. Like That's amazing. It's yeah. like the first time we did it, I was like, it it feels so weird, but when you dress it up with a salad and I mean, think about how many weddings you've been to and you get served, you know, whether it's chicken or salmon and macaroni and cheese, and it's That's the cool. worst food you've ever eaten. Right. And they're spending $50 a person on garbage. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and everybody enjoys pizza. The kids enjoy it. The adults enjoy it. When, and this new cool. age of people that are getting married, their first date might have been pizza. Right, going yeah. to a place, right. yeah, and that's their like that's what they member of of their connection as, we, as to, together, right. right? And we've also made it more affordable so that it's we're not kicking them, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a common thing when when somebody says wedding, all of a sudden the price goes up by fifty or hundred percent, right? Um, right? And kudos to you that um, you're trying to offer value. I think that's so important because the again, like we talk about food costs and rents, and you know. There, every everybody has less money to to go out and eat, so right. you, not and it it sucks that sometimes you have to trade down, but you're yeah. you're still offering quality at an affordable price, and that's, that's right. right. That's yeah, and and so and that that happened through COVID, right? Like the people that are spending sixty fifty fifty to sixty dollars a plate, they needed to go down because they didn't know right. did they have a job next week or not. Well, have a job, and right? we were even scared when we had to increase our prices because of food costs. Right. We were so worried. Were well, people still going to pay for it, even just on the food truck? But yeah, that's every restaurateur's and nightmare, the, right? The is toppings and the products that we use, we can charge the extra, and they're going to come back for it because yeah, right. they yeah. know that it's. Well, yeah. The worst thing is, is if you start compromising on quality and service, then all that that's a that's a that's a death spiral. Often, right? That just right. correct, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. No, well, we it's so cool talking to you guys. Yeah. Um, have you been to Canada? I got to have the honors to do the Vaughn Pizza Festival. Oh. Yeah. Uh, is, and is that uh, Milan? No, not Milan, but uh, Mun no, help me out. That's oh, on the oh, East Coast. Toronto. Right above uh, Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, Toronto. 
Yeah. So I was. Paul I was. Is, uh, my family's in Vaughn. I have my sister that lives in Woodbridge. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was uh, very honored to be able to do that. So. Yeah, cool. And, and how did it go? Are y'all more centralized or no? We're we're in, we're in Alberta, the, the the cool part of the country. <laughs> yeah, love it. the very 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 west of Toronto. We're, okay. we're north of uh, north of um, uh, what's it called? Denver on the map. Okay, so you're straight up in the more middle. Straight up, like a way up, middle, yeah. way up north, though. way north of yeah. way north. Be north of it's Billings, not, Montana. Not even. Does Jay keep you out of trouble every week? Is that is that the deal? <laughs> yeah, we're yeah. We, Jay would be dead if we lived in the same city. Let's put it that way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, in Calgary. He's up in Edmonton. Okay, yeah. where the Oilers play, where our hockey team plays. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. So that's where I live. But it's you know what? It's a complete honor. I always say to Dominic to hear your stories and I know, and we don't need to get into it because, but I'm sure it hasn't been an easy road for you either. And the challenges you guys have done to get to what you're doing and to have those titles, you earn those. And, right. and I, I love that. I love hearing yeah. people. We've had the King of fish on, and now we've had the King of fire on <laughs> and the King yeah. of fish, you know, yeah. like, uh, that's, that's that? great thing for us for even like our managers that run the trucks if they ever have a hard time like we our first oven was a portable oven on wheels so when they would complain about the weather and all of that i have pictures of proof to show what we went through too so it's not we're willing to do the same thing which is why we know you can succeed and you can do it because we've also been there right yeah good for and you i want to say this to the audience too guys the you know working with your wife can be very hard it, it, you know what i mean like this one i come home at 10 o'clock at night i'm ready to like let's talk about us and guess what hey uh did you see this email about work or you know did you, see this password? Did, you know what i mean and i'm like yeah. honey i just want to talk about us you know so again you know i say that because how do you work with your spouse and do such a good job or you know there there was very rocky points where it's like how do we stay in our lane? How do we uh, work through um, maybe disagreeing on? We disagree. What we, talk we disagree a lot, a lot. Right? but we also know at the end of the day we got to be able to shut it off, hang it up outside, and then come in and also be a family too. You know, and, and that's you. tough. It is. I I, yeah, I I could speak to the same thing. Not making food, but working with a spouse, and um, you have to have a good spouse. And it sounds like you got it there. Siler, so Amber, well, so you know, he's my, a lot to deal with. Listen, I, I send her a blank check once a week, and uh, she, she sticks around. Now, when that thing bounces, she might bounce too. So, like, might leave me, but for right now, Dominic, we're doing Dominic, you should do that with me. Send me a blank check once in a while. <laughs> I'll stay around. That's no, funny. I, I want to. I want to thank you both. Like seriously, I love hearing these stories. Dom, I've always said it's the best shows that we do, where people. Um, yeah. that are out there doing this and, and, it, and it's not the easiest industry. We know costs are high. We know food costs are high yeah. labor. So all these things are high and you guys are still crushing it. So hats off to you and to yeah. be able to join us tonight. We know it's not late. We know it's late there too. Um, and I just, I just, honestly, we need to celebrate more people like you every day because honestly our industry is special because of people like you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just want to thank, thank you so much for taking the time and, and to be on our show. Yeah, hey, thanks, we're guys. We got to meet two world famous people, Mr. Jay and Dominic. <laughs> right there, that guy right there. Yes. <laughs> so if you're ever if you're ever up in our neck of the woods, but if we're if we're down there, we're coming. We're coming. I think we're gonna have to. I think we're gonna have we're to raise money and do a tour. We got yeah. a lot of places to visit in the states, right? We have a yeah. lot of places. Well, before we've had you on the know show. it, we'll we'll be franchising the food truck into different states. So we'll get. Yeah, well, cool. we need it. We need it. We need more up in Canada. <laughs> We so, need more in Canada. I want to well, thank you. Well, y'all are the best. Seriously, thank y'all for your time and, yeah, and love thank tonight. You. Thank nice you so much. Absolutely. Hang out for a minute. I want to ask a, ask you a question right after we stop here. Just okay. hang out for one minute. Okay. There you go, Dom. Yeah, you, Jay, you hit it again, man. Good for you. Yeah. Good work. Yeah, yeah. And well, it's them. It's yeah, not cool me. people it's them. and cool story, eh? Oh, just you know, they're so hardworking, and I just love listening to these stories. Who would have thought and, on the on the weddings? 
that's a, I had no idea. But this, this well, weddings this, are changing, right? Well, things like are from, changing. From, 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 you know, doing, right? I, I think there's a little bit of that here, but I sometimes 50 years like, ago I, when you 50 years ago when you got married, think a lot of times we're a lot of people are afraid to think outside the box to say, yeah. Hey, we can do this. Hey, we should offer this. Yeah, like, but it's it's you don't, but you don't even know what the creating, appetite is for they're, they're they're creating a pie that you want to have at a wedding. No, no, I get it, Jake. Like, saying, like it's but beautiful. We, we 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 speak about this all the time. Is that you you can't compromise on quality. You shouldn't compromise on quality. You have to be, and and it's harder and harder because people's expectations are higher because we do have a food scene. We have a food scene here in Alberta. We have a really cool food scene in Calgary and Edmonton. Amazing. Amazing. We, we um, uh, there's a chef in Toronto. He talks about going. He talks. Mario Capra talks about going to Italy for two That's weeks true. for a vacation and says it sucks after two weeks. And you know why? Because all he gets is Italian food. But when he's in Toronto, he can have Italian. He can have Mexican. He can yeah. have Vietnamese. He can have Chinese. He can have Indian. He can have Sri Lankan. He can have Pakistan food. He can have food from Iran. He can have food. Like there's all of these possibilities yeah. that we have. And I, I think that is driving up our expectations, which is good. And the, the restaurants that aren't taking their game and moving it up, like, like Siler and Amber have, and said, hey, we're going to improve our ingredients. We're not going to go worse quality. We're going to get better quality. We're going to charge a That's, little bit more, but, 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 but we're but, up in our game. So kudos yeah. to them, man. We've said this also, Dom, is we've also said people that put their heart into the – you can tell. And trust yep. me, we've had enough on the show. That yep. The people that we select and that come on our show and some of this, they have the heart to yep. do what's 100%. right for the business. You've always yep. said that. You can tell people that have the heart in their yep. in their business is the ones that succeed in this, and it's simple. And and by no means, like I said, I always say this because it's people need to understand – it's not an easy job. No, it is not an easy no. job, and it is tough. And to have a couple together, and to be supporting each other like that, yeah. it's, it yeah. is rare, and it is awesome. Yeah. So very good for them. So, anyways, thanks again, everyone, to listening to our late night show. And Dom, don't go anywhere yeah. too after this no, because we have, we have another okay. show in yeah, okay. twenty minutes. I want to ask. So anyways, I want to remember something though. Okay, but here we go. Do the outro. Outro. You did good. You did good that one. Well, that that implies it was shitty in all the other ones. So. <laughs> all right. Was, all right. Here we go.